Welcome to the Easy Answer Podcast. I'm Brandy, plant-based chef. And I'm Von Anise, plant-based adjacent. On this podcast, we explore thought-provoking conversations around food and simple ways to stay healthy in this crazy world. Hey, Vaughn, how are you? Hey, Brandy, how you doing? I'm doing good, 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 good. So what have you been up to this um? I mean, this summer, like as if I haven't spoken to you like every week and probably every day. But- every day, right? <laughs> well, I was going to take you to get something to eat. Mm-hmm. And now starting in September, they're going to have new vaccination mandates to go to dine in restaurants, but not even mask mandates. You have to be vaccinated. I think, I think that's, I mean, listen. Okay, that's cool. But like, do we need to eat inside? Is that really a requirement for us? Like, do we have to be inside? So I'm going to read what Mayor de Blasio said um, in a New York Times story. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he said, the key, to New- the key to New York City. When you hear those words, I want you to imagine the notion that because someone's vaccinated, that they can do all the amazing things that are available in this city, said Mayor de Blasio. But if you're unvaccinated, unfortunately, you will not be able to take to participate in many of those things, he added. This sounds like the whiz to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> the whiz? Yeah, you know, you get the key to the city and it's just like, oh, all the glitz and glam and all the people are dancing and it's everyone's seeing it's so much fun. Yeah. Um, but then when you pull back the curtain, you you know, you kind of see this little man just like, you know, doing things. It feels like they're like it's so I've been having a mixed thought about it a little bit like the Wiz with that whole keys to the city thing. But then I'm also feeling like X-Men vibes. And when I think X-Men vibes, <laughs> I'm thinking how it's like the mutants against the humans. So we're like placing this whole kind of the unvaccinated versus the vaccinated thing. And I mean. I don't necessarily know if I if I like the narrative that's that's being drawn. Um, I understand the why, kind of, but it seems a little illegal too. I mean, I think that the Delta variant is spreading so much, and it spreads so quickly that they had to do something. But the thing is that vaccinated people can still get the Delta variant. You just, if you get it, you won't, you're less likely to die of it. And if you look at states like Florida and Alabama that are, their hospitals are overrun with people who are dying. It's younger people now. It's not older people. And it's because people are choosing not to get vaccinated. But But how do you mandate that? But is that, right? how do you mandate that? But is that the reason how valid are these stats? I mean, a lot of the stats even reported by the CDC are voluntary stats. So it's not like they're out here doing these like third party gathering of data and putting together reports. They're based off of the people who actually self report and call in. So if that's the case, like how, how valid or how like accurate are these numbers that we're being given? I'm vaccinated. Okay. Let me just say that. I think I've said that before. Um, but like I, my family, we all decided to get vaccinated as a group. And like I said, they said I couldn't come to the barbecue because <laughs> I was vaccinated. So even though I'm deathly scared of needles, I got vaccinated and I didn't grow a tail. I'm still here. I'm still healthy, you know? And so I just think that because the Delta variant is so, it's just so deadly. There are people in hospitals who are saying now, that, you know, they wish that they would have gotten vaccinated. They're begging to be vaccinated. And you can see them on the news. They show them on the news saying it. And I just think that, and I just think that, I think that people just need to just understand we don't trust the government. We understand they've done a lot, especially so our people. We like, hmm, we don't trust these people. You understand? But I think that it's best to get vaccinated. And I agree with the vaccination mandate. Because what, you understand? Like, you, like, okay, so if you choose not to get vaccinated, that's one thing. However, 
if you if something happens to you, people are like dying, and not just dying, but like say you die, you don't die, but people are like losing their legs. Remember that guy who had to have his leg cut off because of COVID? Yeah. yeah. I want you to lose your leg. You know what I'm saying? I just want you to live a normal, healthy. You got a leg now. I want you to have a leg later. Okay. <laughs> I think we're, we're not taking into account the stress that all of this vaccine people versus non-vaccine people versus mandates versus like should i do it not should i not do it like there's a level of stress that comes with this that really doesn't help the argument when we're talking about keeping everybody's immunity strong and as safe like strong as possible so they can stay safe because stress wears down your immunity so i feel like all this stuff is adding to that as a way to kind of maybe force people into these decisions even if they're not necessarily ready to make it considering it like they were a lot of this stuff is so new and and unknown to everybody i know that people are saying that i have a friend that lives in my building and she went to denver colorado and she was saying that when she went to denver and that's where she's from she had a mask on you know because she was vaccinated but she still had the mask on and then she walked into like uh, Sam's Club, and nobody was vaccinated. And her sister who was with her looked at her. No, not vaccinated. Vaccinated. nobody was vaccinated. Sorry, not vaccinated. Nobody had a mask on. I oh, got it, huh? And her sister looked at her, and they were looking at her like she was crazy for wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. Like, and I feel like this, people. If you're not gonna get vaccinated, you should stay home, and you need to have a mask when you go outside. I feel like everyone should have a mask anyway, but now, you know, I feel like they're spreading the narrative that um, I don't want to wear a mask because I can't breathe and I shouldn't have to get vaccinated. It's just too much of this personal liberty that is causing too much pain. But the, to be honest, let's, let's talk about this. So the, the, the powers that be that regulate mask and no mask they put it out there with their mission to get us back to normal and rush through this pandemic that they keep saying is over, which is nowhere near over as we nowhere get nowhere near over. Right? Um, to rush through it and tell them, take the mask off, we're free. And then like not knowing, encourage people to be able to do this and now trying to get them to put it back on. And so a lot of this stuff, even though it's, you know, people have these these liberties, but like, again, this is America. This is why we come to this country. Well, you know, whole conversation about how we got here. But <laughs> right we that's what we have we have these freedoms freedom of choice freedom of speech all that kind of good stuff and if they are in addition to the freedoms that we have also supporting those ideas with them telling people they can do these things it's really challenging for people to make decisions that 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 make the most sense because what are we naturally self-serving right we don't want to do things that don't benefit us and if the mask is uncomfortable. The government's giving some people the okays to take it off. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off too. I don't know. I wanna um. Let's but like you said, that they were protesting in France. Uh -huh. They were protesting in France because they signed a mask mandate, um, a vaccination mandate too, and people were um protesting out in the street. So this is not only an American problem. You understand? And French people, they was getting down, girl. They was throwing. I love how they, they protest. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> cool. So I think I think in my and I mean just I mean as I'm as I'm looking at my I call it the dog muzzle, but this tool right here, people, if you are challenged in your mass mass breathing, if that's a concern for you, this thing really helps. And I mean, say it again. Hi. Oh, you put that on top and I put the mask on top. Yeah, and then it gives you space to breathe within a mask so it's not just like pressed all up. It really does look like a dog muscle. Yeah, yeah, it does. I'm going to wear that on Bono. Yeah, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> so I want us to bring in our, um, we have a, you know, we, Vaughn and I always start off our conversations and then we bring in um, a guest so that this is not just the Vaughn and Brandy show where we just talk about our views. We also want to bring other people into the conversation because our goal here is to have thought provoking conversations um, around food and help you find solutions to stay well. Now, what does this conversation have to do with food? Because um, restaurants, you cannot in New York City now go to eat indoors without uh, proof of vaccination. I believe that's as of September 13th, right? September 13th, yeah. that's a Monday, two days after the 20 year anniversary of 9 11. I mean, but are we going out to eat to celebrate 9 11? And that's why we're concerned. There's no like, celebrating, but I was going to take you out to eat, Brandy. Oh, so we're okay. just going to have to take it. Oh, and we're just going to have to I love it. I'm a picnic girl. I don't. I don't want to be a big host of grass. You know, I don't want to sit on the grass. I'm bougie, so well, we, we can put a mat down. Okay. Well, we're gonna bring it our guests. Okay. <laughs> hey, April. Welcome to the easiest podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So before we start, thanks for coming. Before we start, we just wanna um, ask you, like, who are you? What do you do? And all that kind of good stuff. We love your decor. You're looking. You're, we could tell. Are you a home decorator? Because you're. Well, house. you know, every now and again, <laughs> <laughs> I do a thing or two around the house. <laughs> every you know, now and then, I love for my home to feel like a home. That's it. Yeah. I don't care where I am. I don't care if I'm paying rent versus I purchase something. It's a mortgage. I like for my home to feel nice and cozy. So I've done a few little DIY things here and there, and. It feels good. I like it. It's like, I and it looks good. It looks thank good. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm me. I'm, I'm April Joy. Um, I've known Brandy for a very long time. We've worked together on several things over the years. And also she's just kind of, she's my voice of reason. I'm the voice of reason in my universe. And then she's my voice of reason outside really? of that. But did you see the episode when, about, about how Brandy feels about telling people if she had a dinner party about vegan food? Okay. <laughs> that is very reasonable. If I prepare <laughs> food for you, I don't have to tell you what you're making. Enjoy my vibe. That's all I'm I, saying. I put weed or cannabis in everything I cook, too, and I'll tell you about it. So, <laughs> we're both, we are both doctors. We're very medicinal. We're just we're feeding for health, okay? And we don't have time for y'all to be like, no, I don't eat this. I don't, I don't, eat don't this. do that. No. <laughs> yes, you do. See? <laughs> See, I get it. I'm not the only crazy person. So, you know, that's why she's the voice of reason in my <laughs> so, April, what do you think about this mass um this vaccination mandate that we have in New York that will start September 13th? That won't let you go to gyms, concerts, or restaurants indoors. Yeah. Um you know, I don't know. I noticed that we were, I knew we were going to lean in that direction. Obviously, mm -hmm. we all knew this was coming at some point. Um, so we've had plenty of time to think about what we think of this. But um, I was recently in Chicago, where I'm from originally, and they had Lollapalooza kicking off right before I got I there. I the crowds there. It was crazy. Yeah, I'm like, this is super spread on the It was insane. And people are like, you're leaving. You're going to leave. Lollapalooza is going to start. Just stay. And I'm like, what? for what? I could not be down there. <laughs> anyway, I would be nowhere near that. And, you know, Rolling Loud had just finished in Miami. And then, like, some artists who performed on the stage at Rolling Loud came back and came back with COVID, testing positive for COVID. Horrible. So, and, and I don't know if you've seen, but um, right now, Florida has 23% of new COVID cases in their um, hospital. In the world. Of, no, in the country. Of all oh. COVID cases in the country, Florida has 23% of them, of new COVID cases. So, yeah. um, you know, and so their hospitals are, of course, overcrowded and yada, yada. Um, so it's happening, right? It's It's happening again. Um, probably a little later than we thought it was going to be. I think I thought it was going to be like earlier in the summer and then we'd be off again in the fall. Um, Lala said, Lala said, if you want to come inside, you have to show proof of vaccination. They also said that the FBI would be involved and it will be a federal crime for you to um, have a falsified 
um, vaccination card. You know, people are selling them. So to sell or purchase. Wait, hold up, stop. <laughs> stop. That's a whole black talk, girl. Lays over something that's very important. I need you to say that again. <laughs> okay. So um, Lollapalooza decided um, in order for anyone to enter the festival grounds for the weekend, they would need to have proof of vaccination. And then the, they, in front, they, I'm sorry, I have a dog. We and love then, dogs, it's fine. <laughs> they, they, they also said that um, the FBI would be involved and that it would be a federal crime to possess a falsified um, vaccination card. And it's also a federal crime. To, so it would be a federal crime for you to eat, to purchase it and to buy it. That's so insane. If you don't want to get vaccinated, why do you need to go to these events? That's what you're saying. You want I to agree with home. that. I agree with that. If you're choosing not to be vaccinated, yeah, you put home. yourself at risk. Um, put yourself at risk. Yeah, That's fine. I, I don't agree. put everybody else at risk. Thank you. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Now, to, to say like, to have a, listen, first of all, let's start off by saying I'm vaccinated. I'm fully vaccinated. Oh, me but, too. But I feel like to each his own, just like a boy. I, I wanna, I wanna, um, <laughs> what do you call it? I wanna respect the HIPAA policies, and I won't disclose my um. There okay. you go. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you know the government is trying to force us not to respect <laughs> our HIPAA policies by providing cards in order to go anywhere, but whatever. Um, but we've been a country that's had vaccinations for a long time, and those cards are not new. When I got a job and I had to take a TB test, I got a card that shows that I was tuberculosis, um, that I was free of tuberculosis. So we have freedoms within a certain guidelines, and those guidelines have existed for hundreds of years since the polio vaccine was first introduced. So people acting like, oh, they're taking my freedoms away. They've been taking your freedoms away. Right, but so, okay, so I have to. I have two arguments there. I have one, one, not even an argument, but I have one observation. When the polio vaccination first came out, I would love to be able to be a fly on the wall and hear what the overall majority thought about it. They might have been so relieved because people were dying because tech, healthcare technology isn't as far as it is today. So people were probably dying at a more, much more rapid rate and the communities were a lot smaller. So your whole town is gone, right? And you don't but know what- Polio was doing. affecting children and it was making them, it was affecting their limbs. So I'm people- saying for all of vaccinations. I'm saying, yeah, any, so you're saying vaccinations really aren't new. new. Vaccination cards aren't new. You had to get a card for your TV vaccination. Yes. For yes. Any vaccination, had, all yes. vaccinations had to begin somewhere. And I'd love to hear what people thought- But a hundred a hundred years ago, first came out. had the Spanish flu- they had vaccinations and people rallied around it and was like, oh, people were wearing masks. They showed, they've shown this on TV and people were less like all about these freedoms then. Oh, than we, they know are this, now. we don't know this. Yeah, yeah. So like on one hand, you don't know. Yeah. We don't, you don't know. know. You only know who wrote the history. Right. And, and so you don't know what people's actual thoughts were about it. Um, and you also don't, know if it was impacted by the mass of people who were affected by by whichever virus they or you know virus they were trying to attack at the time so i it's hard to say like you can you, there is an argument that says we have vaccinations your kids get vaccinated every year before school especially if they want to play a sport blah 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 there's a requirement for most campuses yeah yes. exactly so there's arguments but these are Old, so on one hand, these are old vaccinations that have been going around for so many years and there's tri they're tried and true and studied and tested and all that. And so we can feel more comfortable relying on something that's been in our bodies as long as we've lived and as long as our parents have lived and we ha and no one's been affected by it because it's been attacking something that we already know, even the diseases, the viruses have been tested too. This is something brand new. This just happened, it's not even two years old yet. Not even dating back to Asia. It's not even two years old yet. The I virus itself. You. But this is the thing. I'm saying this, if anyone's not vaccinated, I'm saying 
just wear a mask and don't go I to this place. I agree with that. I agree, <laughs> I agree with that. You want to get vaccinated, you want to get a fake vaccination card, and you don't want to wear a mask. You want to do the thing, guys. In, in New York, though, I mean, with not, not that I'm for or against the vaccination card, the fake one. But what I'm saying is, like, they're also making it a requirement for you to be able to work as well. So, like, yeah. some jobs are also requiring you to vac be vaccinated in order to work. So, I think it's kind of crazy to get one in order to go to a concert. That sounds absolutely insane. But yeah. when we're talking about livelihood, like, does yeah. it make? Is it something that yeah, you to work? Or consider? Yeah, I don't know. That they're cutting off the extended unemployment pen benefits. That for that week, the thirteenth, I think that's the last week they can get it. So now they're like, Damn. they know exactly what they're doing. Oh I yeah, mean, <laughs> um, get vaccinated. We're not playing with y'all, <laughs> and we messing with your money. Okay, no, yeah. And no, you know, eviction, and then I do, and the eviction um thing has been yeah, kind of no, we're like, no, no. so business is going back to normal, and y'all need to figure out what you're gonna do. Listen, am I saying? that you know this is bio warfare that may have spun a little out of control and now they're trying to get back to you know the grind but maybe somebody it's in it for somebody to get one more push out of it and then we'll get it back again am i saying that no <laughs> no i'm not saying that <laughs> no i'm not saying any of those things <laughs> <laughs> but but um but it is weird. It's a little strange that um the cases are rising and the government is insisting on people getting back to normal. Um I don't know if the government is saying or the media is collectively saying, listen, we've got to get back to normal. So everyone's gonna have to get vaccinated, or most of y'all are gonna have to get vaccinated so that because because we can't keep putting life on pause, right? I don't know if that's the message that they don't want to just flat out say. That's um, the message that they don't want to just flat out say. Yeah. yeah, I hear it and I get it. But then the challenge comes with the whole idea of if you look at some of these these reports, vaccinated people are being hospitalized as well to get yes. the virus, right? So like we're talking about less, let's get back to normal. But then we're, we're also in New York because this is a New York specific uh, conversation yeah. about this article. We're also hosting a homecoming concert yeah. for vaccinated people to it's celebrate getting back to normal, which is like we're putting it's gonna be like a super what? super spreader. <laughs> that, all the all the all of the literature that I've seen is that the people who are vaccinated they are asymptomatic and they're not getting hot, they're not being hospitalized at the rate that people who aren't vaccinated, they put up a statistic when I was watching CNN and um, no, it was MSNBC. Vaccinated people represent 0.01% of those who are hospitalized. Unvaccinated people are the ones who are hospitalized. Well, are oh, getting, oh, we, oh, we released this episode, I want to, because I have, I have opposing data to that. So I think we should both just put our reference links in like the comments so then people can do like their own kind of research and figure it out, figure it out on their own. Okay. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm vaccinated. And if I found out that I tested positive, honestly, I would have to be like on death's door before I went to the hospital. After seeing the way that the hospital treated patients through them first couple go rounds. I'm probably not gonna go. I'm not gonna go. Oh, I did so have my number. My number would be in the number. My number would prove your point, but wouldn't necessarily prove how the severity. I could die, right? Because I'd rather die than go to that hospital. <laughs> Honestly, if they, of the way they were, they handled things this last time. No shade to healthcare workers. Obviously, I love the healthcare workers and you guys are doing the best that you can do. It's just that this is unprecedented. And so the, you know, the best that they can do is still has a pretty high mortality rate right now. Unfortunately. Well, we say, now I was going to say that <clears throat> there's also a study that just came out that said people who follow a plant-based or pescatarian diet are having least severe symptoms from COVID-19. So just another plug for why <laughs> we should be eating our vegetables and limiting our dairy and uh, meat. 
I mean, it got real hotep for a minute. I'm not gonna lie. Like me and all my people were like, "Did you get your elderberry?" We're like, <laughs> elderberry, <laughs> elderberry. <I'm> like <laughs> on the black market. Like it was sold out everywhere. The price went up. <laughs> Did you have your lemon? Are you having warm tea every day? Are you ingesting something? Like we that is like, exactly man. what I was doing every day. <laughs> every day, I'm telling you, it got very much that. Um, and there's something, you know, to Brandy's point, there's something in there, you know, also. And and I and I'm not surprised that the government hasn't taken to using some of those tactics to help people stay safe as well. In addition to, you know, get vaccinated, wear your mask, stay indoors, but like also make sure you're taking in vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E. You know, these are other things that are proven to be helpful to combat any viruses that may come into, you know, like, and it's just, you know, they're like Windex. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this is hot. Now, you know, we got plant-based off, whatever the heck that's supposed to be. <laughs> no, but I think that <laughs> the problem is, and we can all agree. Yeah. The problem is the people who don't want to get vaccinated, don't want to wear a mask and want to have like a fake vaccination card and want to stay and want to go outside as much as they want. That's insane to me. That's right, but do you think that, that this is encouraging that a little bit? Because there are people who have children and have homes and have families back in their home countries that they have to help take care of, and you're attacking their livelihood. You're taking away unemployment and it, the extensions, and you're taking away their jobs. So don't you think that's going to perpetuate falsified documents so that they can... I mean, I, I've worked in the restaurant industry for several years. Like, I know that there's guys in there that come in from other countries and and work here for like six months and then have their brother work under this name and then they go back home for six months. Like you think if they can do that, accomplish that, then don't you think they can just get a piece of it's a piece of paper. It's a, it's a, it's a piece of paper. Yeah. Mind you, that's a little too big to fit into your wallet, which makes it's it a little too big to fit in your wallet. It's not quite thick enough to sustain itself, but not quite thin enough to be like, you know, regular paper. It's the worst. And it's just handwriting. And you can't laminate it because when you have to get your booster shot, it's not going to be effective. You can't. Yeah, I, and I wanted and I wanted to white out my age anyway. <laughs> I'm proud of my age. Thank you very much. So I was like, yes. They're gonna think all of us are gonna be like, nah, you guys look you like you're in your 20s. No, <laughs> this isn't your card. This is your big sister's card. Somebody stole it. But I but anyway, to the point, like I really for New York, especially, like when I worked in the restaurant industry, I worked in New York. And there's like this is going to perpetuate falsified documents, which is going to perpetuate COVID cases. Like it's just going to keep going. You can't, this is, if you're going to enforce it, this ain't the way to do it. You got to find think, another way. I mean, I think that they have no choice. They don't know what else to do. They're offering people an extra hundred dollars. If you get the vaccine, if you get the vaccine now, people still ain't getting it. It's a hundred dollars. You just take a look. They're entering people in the lottery in California. So when yeah, this, remember the kid in the lottery. lottery. Not a lottery. A lot. Like one million dollars. <laughs> but this kid in Cleveland won. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he won like a couple of million dollars. Yeah, Love when they it. first did it. <laughs> All right, guys. So I think what this episode has has taught us is that there is really no easy answer to this. But that's why oh, wait they work. That. Oh, that's why the, no, but that's why these guys work in these top jobs in the government. And that's why they've gone to school. They have to be tested. They go to school. They go to all this Ivy Leagues. They have to be the best of the best of the best because these aren't easy jobs. This is not an easy decision to make. And you have to encompass the at least you know the overwhelming majority of the population. And so that's why you get to take breaks. That's why they're on break right now. That's why they get to take their break. Because well, I mean, and that's why they get paid for the rest of their lives, and their kids are going to be set up, and their kids' kids, and so on and so forth. That's why, because the job is difficult, the decisions are very difficult. But that's why you have to find a, a good way, a smart way, a Harvard way, a Yale way, <laughs> a Howard University way. Thank you. Very much. And now, and now, a Howard University way. Okay, yeah, to, that's to my alma mater. 
Yeah. Okay. Go you ahead. Know, we go Are y'all like dogs, right? It's the bison. I don't know. It's my cat. Our 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 thing changed like three times since I've even graduated or left the school. So. But I think that the easy answer to this conversation is wear a mask. Wear a mask. Stay away from people and wear a mask. But what are these workers going to do? They they can wear a mask all they want, but they're still going to be in such close proximity in a kitchen with other people, breathing, sweating. They can't hear oh, you. God. What? No, such yeah. and such. You know, like, what are <sighs> they supposed to They can wear a mask all they want, but they can't. If you feel strongly like I don't trust this vaccination yet. And now that it's been a year, or, I'm sorry, now that it's been like seven months since, since people began be, uh, getting vaccinated um, publicly, I think Johnson & Johnson began in January, if I'm not mistaken, or, or something. something like um, and now we're learning that like even people who have been vaccinated are susceptible to catching this thing. And like, and and then people who had it once are having it again. And like the the recoil of this stuff is awful. I have a one of my close friends has been on disability for five months because the COVID, when he caught it, it messed up his lungs so badly that he can't like he can't even walk for longer than 10 minutes. Wow. That's why, yes. Yeah. See, there's no when it comes to this, I think that people who are trying to juke the system. They just, they really just taking their life into their own hands. Like wear a mask, you know, and if you don't feel comfortable to get vaccinated, wear a mask and don't go out that much. And that's it. What are these guys going to do? They just yeah. have to there's do no, it. There's no one, there's no one answer for each individual. Yeah. But the, the quickest thing you could do is wear a mask. Cause I have no intentions about getting COVID again. I fainted in the tub and that was it. <laughs> I'm like a secret anarchist inside of me. I mean, I love, I have, I've embraced the capitalist society that humans have created in these thousands of years that they had an opportunity to do something with this planet. Um, I've learned to embrace it, but like the secret anarchist in me is like hoping no one gets vaccinated, no one else. And they like, don't go to work and like all of everything collapses and we have to like, and we're in some Mad Max version of this shit, post-apocalyptic. Like we thought it was gonna be a meteor. No, it was COVID. And now we're all out here in our three wheelers. That you were wearing each other's skin. I would like to see how we would do it over if we could. And I'd love to witness it a little bit, but you know. You're funny. <laughs> I love it, guys. So, guys, this this conversation um will it will probably continue as we continue to evolve this. Just this morning, um, I read something about the that they're making it mandatory potentially to fly domestically um coming in the fall. So, as they continue to figure out more ways to motivate people to get vaccinated in an attempt to keep us safe. Um, we will continue to probably bring this conversation up. But I want to thank you, April, for joining us in our conversation. I have one more question. Yeah, totally. Yes, finally. Do you have are are you do you have that app on your phone that New York released that where you can show like log your vaccination and so you can just show the app? It's like synchronized. Like support or like that. Yeah, my sister, she yeah. just sent me the link so that I could put mine in. I don't have it now at this moment, but I will have it by the end of the day yes okay. i was just wondering how many people actually participated with that i can't do it because it's only if you're um a new york resident okay mm -hmm. okay sorry go ahead well, no worries no worries <laughs> thanks so much again guys for coming to join us for another episode of the easy answer podcast as always we are here to provide thought-provoking conversations around food and help you find simple solutions to stay well so until next time Always seek out the easy answer. Later. <laughs>